Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing okay. How are you? I probably shouldn't ask you that. I, I know. I like. I'm so tired of hearing people say you look terrible. You sound terrible. All right. Yeah, that's not that's not something you want to hear a lot. Like over and over. I know. I know. Yeah, I went but, through that a few weeks ago, so I get it. <laughs> but we're we're here tonight. Um. Anyway, it it may be kind of short. I don't know how long I can talk. Yeah. Um. And I was laughing though before we got started because we did the mic check and Liberty Larry says something and then he's like, wait a minute, I'm not even, I'm not even close to where I need to be. And he moved to the mic like half an inch. <laughs> it didn't feel right. Like it, it was, it felt out of place. I don't know how that wasn't even close. I'm... <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, inch will go a long way. I'm just saying. Um, Just a quick background because like man there was a i wasn't sure we were going to do this but i didn't want to miss another week but i'm like pretty uncomfortable so um i've had a sinus infection for a while and uh now it's like some kind of tonsillitis and the stress on my immune system has triggered an autoimmune disorder and so i it just like it just keeps snowballing piling on yeah um and i i don't know like My doctor, um, I got some medicine and my doctor is like, uh, we'll set a follow up for three weeks. It should be better by then. (laughs) (laughs) Man, like that should be, don't make me feel too great. Exactly. I was like, oh my God, should be better in three weeks. I I was hoping like a day or two, right? (laughs) Yeah. So, um, anyway, that's where we are doing my best. (laughs) That's rough, man. Um, but we, you know, we missed last week and, and that sucks. And, um, and I didn't, I didn't want to miss another one. I almost did, however, vote for the, like, we do have an episode that's kind of put away, yeah. uh, just in case things happen yeah. and we can't, it's a nice little evergreen. Yeah. yeah. But that's the problem too, right? Yeah. Like we're, we're two weeks from an election now. Yeah, I think that people probably want to hear a little bit more topical for an evergreen. Yeah, and I don't really think of this podcast as a political podcast as such. Like, um, I mean, I you know it's classified as news and politics because that's the classification that everybody uses. But um, I mean, I think of it more as like news and history and I don't know government maybe yeah. like not politics so much though yeah, but just government's like the probably function better, of government yeah it's not, probably a better description yeah not like partisan based, politics based stuff. off the 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 um most recent politics though the government could change a lot mm-hmm. yeah yeah that's um, that's kind of a problem isn't it yeah <laughs> um it, it, and that's a kind of a flaw with the system as it is anyway yeah like you would you would think the government ought to be stable enough that it ought to run the same way at the same efficiency no matter who's at the helm of course we're that's not ever going to happen but well it it should be limited to the point that um people with radically different views can't change things so much yeah but that's certainly not the case anymore um um the U.S. government has been centralized to such a tremendous degree. Yeah. And Which goes back to that thing that that's the reason our politics are so divisive anyway, mm-hmm. is because uh, basically we have an election every four years and one half of the country gets to rule over the other half. Yeah. Well, and that's how it got so bad, too, is that um, that parties with conflicting beliefs use their power at the top to enforce their ideas of the way people should live yeah. onto yeah. the rest of the country. Yeah. And, um, and that was never really supposed to be the purpose of the federal government. Um, yeah. it was, it was supposed to protect people's right to live the way that they wanted to, <laughs> exactly. not to be used as a cudgel to, to <laughs> force people into living the way you want them to. Exactly. Um, but since, you know, apparently the checks and balances of the branches are completely incapable of actually checking each other. Yeah. Uh, we, we're now in this system where um, 
there's a belief that the federal government can impose upon the rest of the nation ways of life. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so yeah, half the country's unhappy every four years <laughs> Exactly. for four years at a time. Yeah. Um, Although, you know, we say that it, it's mostly psychological. I honestly don't see a huge difference between the one side and the other in power. They yeah. talk about different things, but the activities of the government are pretty well, much the same. And, and the, the, the worst stuff will always persist. So mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter who, who the figurehead is, yeah. you know, um, or who controls each chamber of Congress. Like mm -hmm. the, the worst things are going to go on regardless. Yeah. You have uh, Donald Trump with his John Bolton appointment and you'll have uh, Kamala Harris with her Liz Cheney appointment. So yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, does it really matter that much? No, not really. Not in the uh, grand scheme of things. I'm, I'm still kind of blown away by that. I, um, the Liz Cheney thing. Yes, dude. Um, so it, it, it boggles my mind. It, it, it's crazy. She's campaigning with her. Well, that's what I was fixing to say. It's crazy <laughs> to me that they think, that that strolling her out is some kind of win. Yeah. Like, but in and the argument is, well, she's a Republican and she's like against Trump. Well, yeah, but not for the same reason that any other Democrat is against Trump. Like they, it's not like they share that in common. Yeah. At least for the most part. I mean, it's actually, I think that that's probably a really common reason why people are against Trump is the you know this belief in the. American hegemony everywhere. Yeah. Um, I, I think that that, uh, that idea is actually more prevalent on the left now than it is on the right. Well, it is. Uh, well, that's, and the reason for that, this is actually kind of interesting. The reason for that is because the neocons have left the Republican party and are with the Democrats and, and the Liz Cheney thing is, is just the shining example of that. Mm -hmm. But, but that over, that overall is the case. Um, what what will be interesting to see is if if Kamala does lose and the Democrats have to go do soul searching and push the neocons out of their party, like where do they go? Yeah, um, well, because I mean they 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 have to go somewhere. Um, those people can always find a place, man. There's yeah. there's an. I mean, do uh, they are they able to weasel their way back in with the Republicans? You think though. It, it really depends on what happens post Trump, I guess. Yeah. But there is. Well, Trump is the reason that they've gone back to the left, back uh, to the left, back to the left. Yeah. 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 Um, that, you know, Trump was a very popular candidate that got up there and spoke out against American adventurism around the world. Yeah. Um, and, well, and the reason that works so well is because, I mean, people the, are tired of it. People were tired. of Like, yeah. I mean, you had um, George W. Bush. And then you had um, had what John McCain was the next one, mm -hmm. Mitt Romney, yeah. and then you finally have somebody up there that's like, no, we're we're done with this. Like we're this yeah, is this a, is a waste of money. This, yeah. I mean, his his reason isn't that great, but it's whatever. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the people. <laughs> what get are we there. getting out of it? This is a waste of money. That was his yeah. thing. There's no like moral question in that or whatever. <laughs> right. But. But still, at least, I mean, he came to the right conclusion, even if he took the wrong path. I don't exactly. really care. <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, I, I, I don't know. I, the thing that I like that I'm seeing right now is that the war in Gaza, um, I should just say the war in Israel, they claim it as theirs, <laughs> right. right? It's not like it's a separate country. Every time you say the war in Gaza, it's like, the Israelis are attacking the neighboring country, yeah. which legally they are. Um, Gaza technically belongs to Egypt. Um, yeah. But, but they, they control every aspect of it. Though. Yeah, it's been a military yeah. occupation for <laughs> since 1967, so 50-something years. Yeah. Um, and uh, the... But the, the war in Israel has um, rekindled the left-wing anti-war movement. And that's nice to see, even if a lot of them are kind of foolish as well. But at least yeah. it's there, because the left-wing anti-war movement completely died with uh, with Barack Obama, yeah, who was a warmongering president despite his reputation of being weak or whatever. The guy oh, yeah. started wars all over. He started six new wars or something during his presidency. Yeah. 
and um and the left wing anti war movement just died with him like they wouldn't speak out against Barack Obama because of who I mean he like I said he was there like I said he 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 ushered in the next um I mean, he got rid of the George Bush. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. like I say. Was, and he's charming and he's, yeah. he speaks well and, you know, like. He's a good standard bearer for the yeah. party. That's kind of what I was trying to get at. He's, he was yeah. he was such a good standard bearer for the party, even if they the anti-war left people didn't mm. appreciate what he was doing. It's just difficult to speak out against that. Yeah. Well, and partly because of the racial politics, too. He couldn't speak out against Barack Obama because, it, you know, it's yeah. it's toxic to speak out against the the first black president. Yeah. Um, and so that was a problem with it too. And I, nobody cares about speaking out against, you know, old white man, Joe Biden on the left. <laughs> yeah. So at least there's that. I don't know what happens if Kamala wins. Yeah. Well, it's, like, it's definitely, I mean, it's obviously a win for the war party. Yeah. If, first black woman or Indian woman or whatever she is. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. They, they haven't really felt the need to not, attack her the same way that's true um at least from what i've seen and i have mm-hmm. been trying to follow particularly the past couple of weeks but i mean i always try to keep my my ear to the ground but i've been trying to follow the left a little closer mm-hmm. like leading up to this and um yeah they there's definitely i mean there's <laughs> they've got problems over there yeah and i just want to remind everyone that um with the uh, the president or the executive branch, whoever's running it, yeah, Anthony Blinken maybe. <laughs> I, I'm I'm it's, not really sure. It really is kind of wild. Like in most administrations, you kind of know who the behind the scenes like actor is that's controlling <laughs> things. Yeah. Um. You know. I mean, in the George Bush, it was um obviously Cheney. Dick Cheney. Yeah, yeah. You know. I mean, it's always kind of a thing. Who was in the Obama administration? Um. Ah, uh, what was that guy? Um. God, I can't remember his name now. His old chief of staff, though, um, that oh, he, like he went on, uh, he left um, somewhere during the administration and went to be a. Um, why can I not think of his? I name? can't think of Rahm his name Emanuel. Either. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I feel like that was kind of always the guy that was behind yeah. the scenes, I, pulling the strings and whatnot. Yeah, you're probably right. Um, I didn't. I I was kind of curious who you would say because I couldn't think of who it might be. Yeah. But that makes sense. Yeah. Um. Well, so, <laughs> who who is pulling Trump around? Well, uh, that's and that's kind of my thing. As I don't think anybody's pulling Trump around. I mean, I, as as well, they were pulling the wool over his eyes. Some, well, that I, I was going to say, like as far as um, like as far as making the decisions, he's trying to make all the decisions, and he doesn't really have a handler. I would say, yeah, or at least he didn't in his first administration. Mm-hmm. Um, I would think. I but, don't know who was recommending that he hire John Bolton and. <laughs> All these guys. I think uh, he just is really bad at that. I think mm-hmm. that's really what it boils down to is he's so good at firing because he's really terrible at hiring. Because he's so bad at hiring. Yeah. And and by the way, even in the business I'm in with managing people, like I've had I've seen managers that were just that way. They were mm-hmm. really bad at hiring good people, but they were really good at firing people <laughs> because they had to do it so much that they just had a knack for it. Mm-hmm. So but it, going back to the um the current administration, like n- there's nobody in charge of this thing. I don't I, at least, I really at think it stands Blinken. out. I, and it may just be that I really um Despise I really like him? it. Yeah, dis- I really like despising. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see um, that. Um, he's just I, I mean even at his own role I really think that he's been the worst secretary of state ever yeah. at this point. Uh well, given the man our- has absolutely no <laughs> diplomacy at all. Yeah. I mean he's he's worse than Foster Dulles. Um and that's a that's a pretty Low bar, yeah. <laughs> I guess <laughs> to yeah. be underneath. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, well. So, uh, you know, I, I got in a discussion in a bar with somebody like almost two years ago now, and they were asking me like who I think is the most you know terrible person in America at that time, and my answer was Anthony Blinken, and it hasn't changed. Yeah. Well, the disaster that the foreign policy has been for this administration. Um, I think that I think you may be right that the the behind the scenes string puller may actually be him. Yeah. So. Um, but what I was uh, what I was going to get to is that 
you know, with supposedly we don't actually have boots on the ground in Israel, but we are launching attacks against um, other nations around Israel. Yemen comes to mind. Yeah. Um, that we are um, using military resources to defend a foreign country no. uh, in Israel. Um, and we still have military forces in Syria and Iraq and um, still in the northern North Africa. And no. anyway, um, we still have military activity going on all over the world. And I just wanted to remind everyone that that constitutionally the president can't employ military resources without the consent of Congress. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> for those of you that are like, well, you got the 2002 AUMF. Yeah. Which, which I mean, they are, they really seriously still using that. Oh, that yes. They, so that is the, still the, that's okay. still the permission slip. Wow, apparently. That is wild. Um, even though we've switched sides in that war. <laughs> right. Uh, but um, the, con uh, the Constitution also requires two-year renewals. Yeah. Um, that Congress has to reapprove the use of military force um, every two years for any particular war. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> beyond all that, the Constitution prohibits a standing army. <laughs> Yeah. Well, <laughs> like we weren't supposed to have a standing army in this nation. It was supposed to be a, a bunch of militias yeah. that could be called up when necessary to defend <clears throat> the United States. Yeah. Um, and yet here we are with one uh, of the largest standing armies say, in the world. Yeah, there's, there's no way we could do what we were doing now if we had just a bunch of militias. Yeah. Like, we couldn't bases in 80 countries and oh, yeah. Um, it's well. We also couldn't do this without a Federal Reserve I was, and a fiat well, currency. So I was I was actually <laughs> fixing the go there. That was exactly what I was going to say. And yeah. being the um oh what is it the the world currency? Or oh whatever. yeah, the, the um reserve reserve currency. Yeah. The reserve reserve currency status really is what like anchors all of that down. Uh, to a degree, um, you're right. But I I think that even without that, uh, you could still leverage the yeah leverage yeah. the ability to just print money to pay your soldiers yeah but i think at some point you find you hit a breaking point if though. you had to give them something that really had value <laughs> you'd be in trouble <laughs> yeah it, this wouldn't last this long yeah um so uh but anyway the the point being that that congress has completely relinquished its um duties in that regard and that is like if you read the founders they very um purposefully separated the ability to uh, direct the military and the the ability to decide when to use the military yeah. um, to limit the power of the executive because everybody was fearful of an executive that could decide when to use the military and how to use the military. Absolutely. So they gave the power of when to use the military to Congress and the power of how to use the military to the president, to the executive. Yeah. Um, and that was the one of the the chief differences between the president and a king. Yeah. Yeah. Is the ability to, to manipulate the military. Yeah. He couldn't, he couldn't choose both when to use and how to use the military. He could only choose how to use the military when given permission yeah. to use the military by Congress, by the people's house. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the, <coughs> the house still has the ability to check this if they wanted to. Yeah. Um, they could just re Withdraw funding, essentially. Yeah, because they control the purse strings. Mm -hmm. So if the executive was trying to employ the military in a way that you didn't want them to, you just don't pay them. Yeah. Armies yeah. don't fight for free. Yeah. Uh, can you imagine the political reper re reper repercussions? Repercussions, yeah, for that one, though. Uh, um, uh, I think they'd be positive for Congress, honestly, at this point in this country. I mean, I, I think to an extent they would be, but there would be... There'd be a lot of backlash to that. Yeah, uh, a lot of families dependent on those uh, paychecks. You mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's true. But on the other hand, you know, would you rather get that pension for your dead son or have your son? Yeah. Oh, I one hundred percent. Like, um, I, I don't, don't think know. that that's really a question. I hope that that's yeah. not well, really it, a question. It's obviously not. But at the same time, um, 
the people, not everybody views the military the same way we do in that respect, though. I mean, yeah. there's still a lot of people that think, oh, well, they're over there fighting for our freedom. Yeah, got to you know, fight them over there so we don't fight them over here. here. Man, like, that's one that really, I mean, you don't hear it as much as you used to, but it's still out there. Like, yeah. there's still a lot of people that believe that. So, they need to listen to this podcast. <laughs> mm. There's a bunch of podcasts they could listen to. Yeah. Listen to Glenn Greenwald. Listen to Scott Horton. Listen yeah. to oh, Scott Horton would be the yeah. <laughs> He's better at this than us. Yeah, a little um, bit. But uh, he has a focus, though. <laughs> we yeah. just kind of yeah, well, we're into everything. Yeah. Um, Jack of all trades. Yeah, uh, I always wanted to be a master of all trades. Master of all trades. Yeah. yeah. But I, I don't think I'm going to get there. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> trying. <laughs> yeah. Really trying. I'd like to say that I've been this time that I've had these health problems. I've read a bunch, but I don't feel like it. Yeah, right. <laughs> Seriously, like, like I've been watching, like yeah. yeah, I've been watching like crappy movies and yeah. nature documentaries and stuff. <laughs> it's a good time to catch up on your nature documentaries. <laughs> I, you know, it's well because it's something that it's like it's kind of pretty, and I can also ignore it. Yeah, exactly. Oh uh, well. Yeah. Um. So I, I haven't. I haven't made use of my time as well as I probably should have. <laughs> yeah. And I've still been working too, but yeah. um anyway, I I haven't been going out and doing other things though. <laughs> yeah. So uh we did kind of miss the fiasco, although they're not letting it go. It's kinda like very fine people, it seems. Oh yeah. Um, of uh Trump's enemy within comments. Um, where he's going to turn the military on American citizens that disagree with him is the way it's being presented. Yeah. Um, Which I, I, so I, I'd like to say real quick, so you mentioned this to me, and I had been seeing it like all over social media. It's like, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and basically, I mean, I fell into the trap. Like, And I, I had said, told you that night, I was like, well, I haven't heard the full clip. I've been meaning to go look at it, and I just hadn't. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, I mean, that was... If I hadn't have went and found the full clip and listened to it, like, and for people who aren't doing that type of thing, yeah. it's so easy to just fall into that trap. Well, that's what he said. Like he said, he was ready to, you know. Turn. Yeah. I mean, that's and he's gonna be a, a dictator from day one, and like all the yeah. other, oh yeah, just lies that there's that tons of them. But it was interesting though that I had kind of gotten reeled into this one. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's just that easy for it to happen. So um, for everybody listening. Like, don't just, like, take what you hear on social media and whatnot. Um, well, and here's your chance, because uh, I'm sorry, this is a long clip, but this is about a no. two-minute excerpt from that interview um, to to put it in context. Yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about it. So you can yeah. listen to the whole thing right here. Let's do it for him. All right. Everyone all over the world, the Congo in Africa, we've taken in hundreds of people from their prisons. The Congo, all the way in Africa... Uh, Many, many countries, uh, the Middle East, we're taking in massive numbers of people and many terrorists and they're coming into our country and they're Middle Eastern terrorists. And from Asia, we're taking in and a lot from South America. There was an Afghan refugee charged with plotting U.S. Election Day massacre. Nothing surprises me. What about that, though? Are you expecting chaos on Election Day? No, I I don't think not from the side that votes for Trump. But I'm just wondering if these outside agitators will start up on election day. Let's say you win. I mean, let's not let's let's remember you've got 50,000 Chinese nationals in this country in the last couple of years. You have people on the terrorist watch list, 350 in the last couple of years. You've got, uh, like you said, 13,000 murderers and 15,000 rapists. Um, What are you expecting? Joe Biden said he doesn't think it's going to be a peaceful election day. Well, he doesn't have any idea what's happening in North Carolina. He spends most of his day sleeping. Uh, I think the bigger problem is the enemy from within, not even the people that have come in and destroying our country. By the way, totally destroying our country. The towns, the villages, they're being inundated. But I don't think they're the problem in terms of election day. I think the bigger problem are the people from within. We have some very bad people. We have some sick people, radical left lunatics. And I think they're the and and it should be very easily handled by, if necessary, by national guard or if really necessary by the military, uh, they, because they can't let that happen. Okay, I I think it's clear from that clip that he's talking about 
in that case, he's expanded this a little bit since. But yeah. um, in that clip, he's talking about like the Antifa or s- these, you know, radical left wing groups that may cause trouble. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, he says uh, they may have to use the military because the important point to be made here, I think, is that um, on the election or after the election, he's not in power. <laughs> yeah, it's not his turn yet. <laughs> it's two more months, two and a half yeah. more months that Biden administration <laughs> is still in power. Trump doesn't take office until January. Exactly. So even if he wanted to use the military after the election, he can't. Yeah. Yeah. Not until he takes office. <laughs> so, you know, it's obviously it's, it's been blown it out of proportion. Crazy listening to him. Like he, he just rambles yeah, and does. rambles. <laughs> like it's, it's, it's really kind of, well, Joe Biden doesn't know what's going on. He sleeps all day. Like out of that, <laughs> yeah, just yeah, like some just, of that stuff. You just got to get the dig in. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, I think in context, now, like I said, he has expanded this since then. So he yeah. said Nancy Pelosi and some other people, Chuck Schumer, I guess, and I, I can't yeah. remember. Like he's named some politicians that he considers the enemy of the people. And the yeah. truth is that I think really pretty much all politicians are the enemy of the people. So I'm not going to argue with <laughs> yeah. him on there's this a, point. There's only a handful I'd want in my corner. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Small handful. Um, the what's interesting about that is that even in that case, he's talking about um, people that are destructive of what he thinks this nation should be. Yeah. I think, I mean, yeah, I think it's fair to interpret it that way. Um, and I, I don't think that he's necessarily even wrong about that. Now, in a lot of cases, <laughs> I would put him in that category too. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's not, it's not partisanship there. There's plenty of Republicans that I consider to be enemies of the people as well. Yeah, <laughs> plenty. Um, <laughs> Most, in fact. <laughs> yeah, but he he doesn't have the power to do any of this anyway. This this isn't going to suddenly become a a police state. Yeah, we already are one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the groundwork's <laughs> already been laid. And. And you don't know how right you are, probably, because I don't think that this got a lot of press. You're not likely to have heard this in mainstream media, I think. I would be surprised. So tell okay. me if I'm wrong, and, and right. I'll eat my words. But right. um, So it was like a week or two ago, there was an update to the uh, Department of Defense Directive number 5240.01. You guys can look this up yourselves. I'm just going to kind of summarize. All right. Um, that repealed and replaced all previous versions. And, and this particular directive um, discusses how the m- military can be employed by law enforcement within the United States. Now, up until now, um, the limitation because of posi comitatus that you can't use uh, U.S. military on U.S. soil against U.S. citizens yeah. um, has limited the use of, or the, uh, I guess, the working with law enforcement to intelligence services. Okay. So they could use military intelligence um, capabilities and personnel for specific tasks. Yeah. Right. And I'm thinking, like, the things that you would normally think about. Like, they're trying to track serial killer or, you know, that kind of thing. Like, you know, some kind of serious... Uh, issue yeah. or trying to track terrorists. Or I was going to say terrorism. I'm sure is a yeah. big part of that. Yeah. Um. So, but it's been limited to intelligence services, uh, uh, um, or intelligence personnel inside the U.S. military. Yeah. Well, this new version now allows um, <laughs> lethal units of the yeah. U.S. military to work with law enforcement in the U.S. against U.S. citizens under certain, like, not very, certain kind of ill-defined situations, yeah. um, <coughs> which really means whenever they want. And um, and so that's the new version. But this is this is what the Biden administration has done. Has Yeah, has opened the door for. Right. Yeah. And... It's not even, and I'm sure that there's people listening to this podcast are like, yeah, like they wouldn't have done it anyway. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you're right. You're probably right, but it's different to have it codified. Yeah, but now it's legal. Yeah, exactly. And so um, it's it's actually the Biden administration that's preparing to use lethal U.S. military forces against Americans on American soil. Yeah. No, I haven't heard anything about that. That's all. That's news to me. And so if Trump uses it, then it's their fault. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's going to lay the groundwork for that, yeah. right? Um, so, but that's, that's pretty scary to me. Oh, absolutely. Um, this yeah. is, I don't, I don't want any government officials to have that type of power. Yeah. And like I said, of course it's, you know, under certain conditions, but the conditions are ill-defined, which means that, that the White House well, lawyers can make it work for whatever. So I was fixed to say, even if they were well-defined, a good mm-hmm. lawyer is going to get you through anything you need on that. Like, that's, yeah, I, mean, I mean, we're ran by law. This country is run by lawyers. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they justified the use of torture. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah, exactly. That's it's perfectly legal. Yeah. And all these, uh, actually, all these activities of the um, presidents since George W. Bush in terms of uh, using military assets overseas without congressional permission, yeah. like that was done the same way. It was mostly done within that administration. Um, but they came up with a whole bunch of, of lawyerly reasons that this was legal, even though it doesn't say it anywhere, and that it was constitutional, even though it doesn't say it anywhere in the Constitution. I I have maintained for as long as I can remember that what it means to be a constitutional lawyer is that you are trained in the art of finding loopholes or ways around the Constitution. It's not about enforcing the Constitution. It's about ignoring it. Yeah. How can I get around this document? Yeah. (laughs) That does such a good job of, of restricting, to, of restricting our government. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right? Like if, if you just interpret it the way it was intended to be interpreted, it does a really good job. It just, we just ignore it now. Yeah. I say ignore it. We we're the constitutional lawyers have done a really good job of mm-hmm. <laughs> working their way around it. Yeah. I mean, so you can make the case that they're planning for a January, another January 6th. Yeah. I, I think they're probably wise to do that because I think, I don't see a whole lot of ways that this goes peacefully. Yeah. I mean, e- e- either side. Like, I, it, I don't think... Well, either. Trump says it's not going to be his people. Yeah, well, <laughs> we've, <laughs> we've seen that before. But it's um, not like, you know, well, the the, is, of course, so the January the 6th thing has been blown so far oh, out of absolutely. proportion. Um, I mean, like there was some violence and there was some, but oh, for the most question. part, it was not, it was not a violent mob. It for the wasn't most part. another 9-11. <laughs> no, or Pearl Harbor <laughs> or, or whatever. Yeah. All those oh. comparisons they made at the time. It wasn't the greatest threat to American democracy since the Civil War. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but there uh, is something to be said that if Trump loses, like there's no way the Republicans believe it. Like I just, I, there, there's, there's just, they're not going to accept it. Um, now, whether or not they'll be in the streets rioting, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're not going to accept it as they're they're going to think it was stolen. And honestly, I don't blame them. Yeah, like the shenanigans and everything we've seen the past four years, and and even in the twenty twenty election, I just I don't blame them. Yeah, like I don't trust it. Well, I saw an interview with uh, Kamala um, where she was talking about Trump, and you know, in terrible terms and saying we all know who trump is and i I was thinking (laughs) like that's really funny for her to say that because um we all know who trump is and that's why the people that are voting for him are voting for them yeah and (laughs) nobody knows who you are that was uh, you you took the words right out of my mouth exactly we don't know who this woman is i mean this woman has been many different things yeah well i maintain that her um her goal is purely to advance her career, and it doesn't matter what posi- she doesn't hold any real positions of her own. It's yeah. just whatever it takes to get to the next level. Yeah. She does and says whatever she needs to say to get to the next level. And in all of these, um, all these interviews, her <laughs> my my favorite contradictory point that she's making is that she's the candidate for change, but she wouldn't do anything different than what. <laughs> Biden has exactly. done in the last four she years she while she was his vice president. Two things that he did that she would do different from him. Yeah. But she's the change candidate. Yeah. yeah. But she's not Joe Biden, but she yeah. wouldn't do anything different from him. <laughs> yeah. And she's the candidate for change. Like, I don't know how None you of can. These things. Yeah. This does not, this seems like a contradictory message. Yeah. 
It's amazing to me somebody that can progress into power that far. And and I think you're right. I don't I don't even think she knows what she believes. I think she mm. I think she has one goal, it's to gain power and and whatever I've got to do to 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 do that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah. Um but it's crazy to me that like I can't imagine not having like some kind of like North Star. <laughs> some kind of principles. Yeah. yeah like know, it just it blows my I was thinking about this in reference to the um and this is kind of silly, but this is I was thinking about it the other day, obviously because it's so much because Trump's brought it out, but the um her lying about the working at McDonald's thing. Mm. Like I can't I just <laughs> um, can't imagine like going through my because she's been saying this forever that yeah. she worked there. Just going through my life with this that type of lie. Like I've got to lie about this this meager job that I had. Yeah, you know? just to show how blue collar I am. Yeah, or whatever. like yeah. I just can't imagine like in my own mind like rationalizing that or be or thinking that was okay. Yeah, like I just it blows my mind. And then the Trump thing to the the troll he pulled this past weekend where he went and worked at the McDonald's. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. That's just well, classic. you know that wasn't real. Oh yeah, like it was right. all it was all planned. <laughs> like they had the restaurant shut down and so forth. Oh yeah, I watched the video. They yeah. clearly had the restaurant. I mean, I watched the video from it. Like yeah. I, it was entertaining. <laughs> like I, think, if, <laughs> I would tell. I would say anybody that hasn't watched it, go pull it up. I yeah. enjoyed it. Like, I, I think it's hilarious that people would even believe after two assassination attempts that they would just let anybody yeah. who happened to come up to the drive-through well, without. That's, that's what I heard people say. Them and so like, forth. can you imagine like driving up and it be Trump there? I was like, then people knew it was. Trump. Trump there yeah like, there's, like they vetted those people they searched those vehicles like yeah. they, they didn't just pull up and all of a sudden there's trump like <laughs> it's a, like um, the idea that it would be that way is so ridiculous that, yeah exactly know. so yeah it was planned it was an it was a sure photo was. op whatever but but it served its purpose it <laughs> yeah, got it everybody talking about the com- big kamala lie and i'm mm-hmm. telling you like i say i did watch it i thought it was an enter- trump's an entertaining character like regardless of whether you like him or not he's an entertaining character yeah um and i do believe that's just like with kamala he is a character like i do think he be- he has beliefs and he's like mm-hmm. um and well he's, i mean he's he talks about, about policy him. things like you know he doesn't understand the, a lot of this very deeply. That's 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 certain. His, but yeah. um, but he ha- he does at least have positions that he well, yeah, takes. Absolutely. Uh, what do we know about Kamala at this point? We know that she grew up in a middle class family where people cared about her their yards. <laughs> um, we know that she's not Joe Biden. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we know that she wouldn't do anything differently than Joe Biden. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like- uh, <laughs> what else do we know about her? What else has she really said? Not a lot. She likes to lock up your people for not sending their kids to school. She didn't say that. She did that. <laughs> I know, but she didn't say that. Like, well, I mean, I'm just trying to like bring it down to what she has what expressed she said, in yeah. this campaign. Yeah. Um, and it's nothing, almost nothing. She's well, and you contrast that with Trump once again, like him or love him. The stuff he's he <laughs> like him or in. love him. Those are the only options. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's all you get. It's one or the other, my bad. But yeah, um, no. But like he, Trump's been saying the same stuff since the eighties. Yeah, pretty like, much. I mean, his policies have not like the stuff that he says publicly has not changed a lot for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I mean, he was railing about China way early on you know i mean he was on oprah one time yeah it's one of his worst policies though in my it opinion. is but I'm at least saying, he, yeah but, you know what he where he stands but exactly i mean yeah. he believes what he's doing mm-hmm. um so um we gotta wrap this up because uh, like it you're, hurts to you're swallow out of gas. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, um i i did want to talk just really briefly um about the rfkj phenomena oh that's right yeah uh because i saw a report on um, System Update, which is Glenn Greenwald's podcast, uh, where it was Michael Tracy. I guess Glenn Greenwald was out for some reason. I'm not sure. But I think it was Michael Tracy anyway. And he was talking about the RFKJ scam, yeah, <laughs> essentially. Now, and, and here's to summarize what he was talking about, is that uh, RFKJ, when he dropped out of the Democrat primary stuff, because he wasn't getting a fair shake. Yeah. Um, 
he had to find and he formed a new party and had to find a way onto the ballot in all 50 states which is a monumental task yeah, like anybody who's that, been involved yeah. with the libertarian party knows yeah, how yeah, difficult yeah. some of this, these states this are. isn't just that doesn't just happen yeah yeah um now some states are really easy yeah but most aren't most aren't we live in one of the most difficult yeah we're top 10 probably yeah. um of most difficult to get on the ballot in alabama but um so anyway rfkj had to find a way to get on the ballot to make it so that he could potentially be elected and so on. Yeah. Um, and a lot of places it was going around collecting signatures and so on. And some places he just tried to co-op existing small state parties yeah. that had been active enough to already have ballot <laughs> access in their state. Yeah. And so he was going to these small state parties in some of these places and, and asking for their nomination um, so that he could have ballot access in that state instead of going through the whole rigmarole to get ballot access for his own party. Yeah. Um, and some of these states agreed. Yeah. And he made a pitch to the Libertarian Party at the National Convention, too. He did. And leading up to that, there was a lot of, I mean, behind the scenes, he was working that, mm -hmm. that working us, trying to move us in that direction. Yeah. Um, and uh, I was, and I'll just go on and say, I was on, I, th I felt like at the time that we should be open to that, mm -hmm. but I I wasn't really strong feelings one way or the other. Yeah, I was absolutely opposed. I mean, I, I'm not to say that I didn't think that it should be discussed, but yeah. um, I was opposed to putting a non-libertarian on, on the ballot, the ballot for, for the us. libertarians. No, because um, I, I don't want people to believe that RFKJ's positions are the libertarian positions, even though I was real serious about voting for him. Yeah, but I didn't want him to be a libertarian candidate. Yeah, yeah, um, because we are something else, and that's yeah. that. Like I say, you're you're holding the strong argument. Like that's, mm -hmm. and ultimately that's I think where I would have ended up with it. But but I was I was open to the argument. Yeah, no, like I said, I I, I like arguing. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I was perfectly content with the argument, yeah. um, and I, I don't think that it was unfair to allow him to. I, I mean, to like I would have never pitch. tried to prevent him from making his pitch or anything yeah, like that. Absolutely. Um, I just think it would have been a huge mistake for the Libertarian Party. Yeah. Um, and I expressed that to everybody that I got the chance to while <laughs> I was at the convention, but yeah. Um, Here's what's happened as a result, though, for some of these small parties that he did get their uh, their endorsement. Yeah. Um, now he then he dropped out of the race. Yeah. And uh, through his support behind Trump. Yeah. Well, for any of these small parties where he was the candidate for their party in their state, and he was taken off the ballot, which isn't all of them. Some. Some of them he had to stay on the ballot for, but any yeah. of them that he goes off the ballot, he killed the party. Really? He would have killed the party in that state. Yeah. Like imagine if, <coughs> you know, you'd gone through all the rigmarole as maybe the constitutional party or something in the state of Alabama to get ballot access. Yeah. And you give your nomination to, um, to RFKJ and he drops out of the race after the fact and uh, so you don't have a presidential candidate on the ballot now yeah. in the state of Alabama for your party. Yeah. And now it's almost impossible to recover from that. Now. I was going to say that ballot access is gone. Yep. Like you just lost it. And mm -hmm. particularly, I don't know how it works. I mean, I know every state's a little different, but in Alabama, like you can hang that at bad boy up. Like yeah. You're going to, it's spend, hard enough to stay on the ballot in Alabama anyway, but yeah, trying like, to get, well, trying to get, regain that access is mm -hmm. just a monumental task. Yeah. Um, now we have to do that every two years. Yeah. Um, because, because of the stringent requirements in Alabama. Yeah. But you know, if it was a small, cause you have to get 20% in a race and then everything from that level and below you maintain ballot access. So if you get 20% of the popular vote in a presidential race, then you have ballot access for the entire state so you or that, any federal race. You hear actually. that Chase Oliver, we need 20%. Yeah. <laughs> you give us that 20%. <laughs> Did you hear that clip on no agenda a week or so ago where some guy was talking about the, um, the ballot the sample ballot in Oregon, I think it was, uh -huh. where they had blank pages for Trump and J.D. Vance and everything else was listed. But the guy's going through and he's like, um, you know, well, we have uh, Kamala Harris and Tim Walls. Um, we have 
Jill Stein or whatever, well, she's not going to win. Um, we have Chase Oliver. I don't even know who the hell that is. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. job. Yeah, well, that's, well done. Well, like, as far as I mean, I'm concerned, Oregon, that may be for the better. <laughs> well, uh, maybe, but like Oregon, yeah. that's the kind of state where I feel like Chase Oliver maybe should have gone in and tried to make a case. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's like people should have... know who he is in Oregon. He, <laughs> yeah. They're probably more aligned with his views than a lot of places. Yeah. Anyway. Um, the point being that we really dodged a bullet because what would that have done to the national party yeah. if we had given um, RFKJ our nomination and then he dropped out and endorsed Trump? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, you're right. And I would like to think that had that had had he had gotten actually gotten our endorsement, mm -hmm. that he would have stayed in the race and saw it through. Well, but maybe. I, I mean, no, but I by no means know that. Yeah. Sir, well, I mean, think of how bad it was for the party, though, when Gary Johnson and Bill Weld stayed in the race on the Libertarian ticket, but were endorsing Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Yeah. That was Bill Weld. I don't remember so much. No. Oh, yeah. You may be that right. Was, I, that was a Weld thing. Yeah. But he did, like, like weeks before the election, like he was on national TV endorsing <laughs> Hillary Clinton. Like, um, but uh, Gary Johnson was bad mouthing Trump, though, at the time. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm sure. He, he may not have endorsed Hillary Clinton, but he was speaking out against Trump. Yeah, yeah. No, he was, yeah. Um, anyway. Uh, but that's, <laughs> Which would that's have been still, fine if he was speaking a, out against both of them. Well, it's still but, a far cry from him dropping out of the race, though. And endorsing another and, candidate. Yeah. And remember, RFKJ's big pitch was to uh, to topple the duopoly. Yeah. Um, yeah. To create a serious challenge to the... Um, the two party system. Yeah. And then he drops out and endorses one of those two parties. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Him doing that as a libertarian would have been devastating for the party. Mm -hmm. There's no question about that. So remember that libertarians out there that think, well, maybe we just need to pick the guy that people know so that we can get a lot of votes. Yeah. Well, no, maybe you just try and pick the best libertarian. Candidate. That's, that's something we've got to get past as libertarians too. Like the whole idea that, I mean, what Gary Johnson got the most votes ever. And like, mm -hmm. what did that gain the party? Like this, we've got the, the pitch is to, to change people's minds and change people's way of thinking. Yeah. And, and the, the presidential campaign is nothing but a vehicle to try to do that. Votes don't, I mean, it's not even, I mean, we need votes obviously for, mm -hmm. for a ballot access and things like that. But at this stage of the game, that's all we need them for. Well, the pitch for the Libertarian Party, though, has to be we're something completely different. Yeah. Not we're kind of like them and kind of like them, but we're better. No, we're something completely different and yeah. we're better yeah. and than all got, of them. And we've got and, and the, the challenge is to getting that message in front of people and convincing mm -hmm. them, them that that we're something different and it's better yeah. for you. Yeah, we're, we're not and somewhere everyone. on the continuum between Democrat and Republican. We're like a third peg. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're off that line. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, and, so. um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, my point there isn't, yes, that's certainly the challenge is to get that message out there and get people to understand why we're better. Yeah. But um, m my main point there is that you will never make headway by trying to be something like the existing parties. Yeah. Because if you are going to vote for something like the existing parties, you're going to vote for one that you're confident has a real chance of winning. Exactly. The only way you get, you peel votes away is by making the case that, yeah, we're something that's completely different from both of them. And whether we win or not, we're making a statement here about that the people those of you that vote for us and the more of you, the better are making a statement that we're not satisfied with the status quo. Yeah. We want something completely different. You thought Trump was the middle finger to the establishment. Give us a look. Yeah. No <laughs> kidding. <laughs> like, you, if you want a middle finger, we got the biggest one in the room. Yeah. I promise. <laughs> Phone middle finger. Number one. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like we, we are that. Okay. We got to wrap up. Man. All right, man. Um, so honestly, I don't even know about next week. Uh, we'll, we'll do our best not to miss two weeks in a row. Next um, week's the week before the election. Oh gosh, we got to do something then, don't we? I feel like we should. Man. Okay. <laughs> I can do it. I can suck it up. I'll, I'll, 
It's also, if we do Thursday, it'll be Halloween day. We could do a Halloween episode. We could do a Halloween episode. I don't know episode. that we could. I've got, I may have obligations. I may not. I don't know. It's, it's out there. Your, your kids aren't still trick or treating. No, my kids aren't still <laughs> trick or treating, but I've got, I mean, I definitely have work obligations yeah. that, and I may have, I don't know. I may have Halloween obligations. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll figure out something, but you're right that we do have to, we got to record something next week. Yeah. Um, I mean, we may could go a little later and maybe do something over the weekend, just days before. Yeah. To, well, we got to give people time to listen to it though yeah. before they vote, right? Because because <laughs> obviously what we say <laughs> here is, is going to impact people's votes. This is going to be our final votes. pitch for Chase Oliver <laughs> <laughs> or something. <laughs> oh, did you get that video I sent you of um, Chad Wright? Oh, so the, I saw the Chad and Chili <laughs> 2024. Oh, I didn't man. get to watch it, but I saw the link and I was like, oh, uh, I need to click. I, I just forgot about it, honestly. Oh, yeah. yeah. They, so that, is that I where might, your vote's going? I might write them in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. we'll play it while while we're um, putting every, posting everything here. I'll play it for you. All and right. You can, you can see what you think. Um, so maybe that'll be my pitch for next week. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll have to see. He's not perfect, but like some of the things he's good on, he's really he's good really on. He's really good on, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, well, let's wrap it up, and uh, and we will be back next week um, right. at some point, uh, hopefully Thursday or Friday. Yeah. Um, well, it kind of has to be. I guess either Thursday or Friday. So, so. Um, if it ends up being put off till Friday, maybe it's late, but whatever, we'll get it done. We'll do it. Yeah. All right. Um, so, uh, in the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook. Uh, you can subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, Podbean. Like, can you hear my voice going it's, out? It's like you're you're losing. It. <laughs> um, Come like check out share. the Liberty Mike page. I've been pretty active on there with the memes here lately. Sweet. Good. So. Yeah. Go go to the Liberty. The Liberty mm-hmm. Mike on Facebook. Um, and if we're not going to record, that's where you'll find out. Yeah. No, we're recording. Well, I'm just it's, saying it's for future, decided. not for next week, but for future reference. Yeah, yeah. There was a message posted last week. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, well, that that's it. You guys know what to do. <laughs> we'll be back next week when we finally get this right. In the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Mm-hmm.